Hi, welcome to University TV. My name is Princeton Redu. It's another edition of uh, University Sports AFCON Review Show where we analyze the major happenings in the AFCON 2021 tournament in Cameroon. Um, the boys have been separated from the men. I'm talking about the group stages that comes to an end, and then we have now 16 teams that are going to participate in the round 16 um, stage. Now, the Blasters of Ghana are out, the holders, Algeria are also out. Who could have thought this would happen in this? Yes, Afcon. After this short break, I'm going to introduce my guest and then we take off from there for a discussion. Don't go anywhere. Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is the Afcon review show here on Universe TV by Universe Sports. So today my guest here once again is Kosi Kosi, good morning. Uh, good morning, good morning. How's it going for you? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I think that we is more disappointments from from ghana but mm. uh, how, how we could do them um, it is interesting mm. and it, it's very difficult now that the blasters are out of the competition yeah. find it difficult to follow the the competition now so, so we're going to talk about the blasters as it in this year's have come back first of all we start from group a where Cameroon they finished uh, the group with seven points we all thought that there would be uh, three out of three wins for them but in the last game kivet grabbed a draw against them it was a one-one a game that ended over the so Cameroon finished the group on top of the table with seven points and then the second was Burkina Faso and then Cape Verde they were able to manage and then um, get four points so they, they finished or they qualified to around 16 as one of the best third place teams in the tournaments uh, Cape Verde and Cameroon that game was a really it was a game that Cameroon not, didn't need necessarily a win yeah and so what do you think that uh, do you think that that's why that was the reason why Kibel was able to grab a, a, a draw against Cameroon? Yeah. Or, or they were just good on the day? Yeah, so I said in previous episodes, and uh, from you see from round one and round two that uh, they, were, they, were, they wanted to win from round two and round, two, uh, round one and round two. But I look around, we realize that they weren't really in for it. They knew that they are already qualified. Mm -hmm. a, a point to just make it, uh, the points go up just a little bit to seven points. So it wasn't really necessary for them to really qualify and then they as a host nation realize that all the all the big guns were in the stadium for that particular encounter somewhere to fill the calf pre uh, the fa president for cameroon and all were there so uh it was just a uh, something to really show that yes they are cameroon and they are they are in to make a statement uh, going ahead indeed for the round of 16. it wasn't i don't think if what the previous games and compared to the cape verde one it wasn't one that they were really in to win. They were just, they were just playing some, if you put it that way. Uh, Vincent Abubaka adding to his tally. That's the really most important thing for them. Now he's up there, the top goal scorer, and then he's really doing some. But if you look at the, even the lineup, compare the two games to the lineup that they did in the third game, it wasn't all the, the stars that played in the one and two. They're trying to get people some playing time and all, but uh, still, they even pr proved that. Uh, even on that day when they were really substandard, for a long, a long part of the game, large part of the game, they were in control, hitting the, the balls in, have more shots on target than, than Kivet. I uh, really, I think the Kivet goal was a, quite a lucky one. The defender really blocking out Onana, so there was no way Onana was getting to that ball, but a good flick again from Rodriguez. Mm, very well, that's the low down there in Group A, so Kivet qualifying out of the group. Uh, very interesting there for them. Ethiopia finished fourth in that group. So in Group B, Senegal, they managed to top the group with five points with just a goal after yeah. uh, one just a win and Sadio Mane's only penalty goal was the only goal they scored in, in the group stage interesting for them but they were able to to uh, go through the group stage Senegal they're still worried for, for, for the team yeah. uh, do you think that uh, they are going to, to be able to handle the pressure in the, in, the, in the next round of the tournament where they are still struggling to find the goals because the other competitors like Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire yesterday did it to Algeria. Do you think that they will be able to, to make it to the next stage? Yeah, I think that uh, it depends on who they will face in the round of 16. And then for Senegal, I think that there's a lot more that needs to be done for their team. Uh, in this third round, realize that the players that had COVID are coming back. So Edward Mendy was in post. Uh, the, the FIFA best goalkeeper was in the post for, for them uh, as well. So coming back from COVID and the rest. So gradually, gradually, the players will gradually get back into the team and we know the Senegal to be as strong as, uh, as, as they, they were ever. But then if you look at their performance so far, that penalty really being very important. The rest are being dropped. And I think that uh, it's, uh, it goes down to how substandard the rest of the, the group 
uh, teams were. Mm. That's why Senegal qualified. They qualified with just five points. Mm. Second in Guinea had four points, and then Malawi also had four. So separating separate them on goal defense. Really. Zimbabwe, who finished last, also had yeah. three points. You understand? So, so the group was very open. Very, very open group. And a lot of club happened on the last day. Imagine if uh, Senegal had lost that game. Zimbabwe won 2-1. It's like been a whole new ball game mm. uh, all over. So I think that for so Senegal, there's a lot more that needs to be done. But then gradually, as they move forward, the players who had COVID, they had about, at the beginning of the tournament, they had like 10 players out through COVID and injury. So these players are coming back gradually and then we'll see that going forward, the, the Senegal team will be the Senegal team we know. All right, so that's the lowdown then in Group B. In Senegal, they managed to top the group um, with five points and uh, plus one goal over there. Now to Group C, where there's a whole lot of drama, a lot, lot of issues over there. Morocco, the, the favorites, they eventually topped the group with seven points after uh, after the three games, they managed to, to beat Ghana and also beat um, Comoros in that group over there. So Gabon finished second, and Comoros surprisingly finished third. So they qualified to you know, sit in the Black Stars of Ghana, also finished last in that group. Not uh, good news for the Black Stars at all. Christy, uh, going into the last round of games, you, you predicted that it was not going to be easy for the Black Stars yeah. of Ghana against Comoros. I'm not sure you, you thought that. It was going to be that bad against Comoros. It was going to be a 3 2 defeat. Well, I mean, for the Black Stars, really, I'm even surprised they were able to get two goals because mm. the, the Comoros team bust that whole game from the very from the very blast of the way. So, first five minutes, you go in a goal, double your lead, and then get go on to get a third. So, even for, for me, the Black Stars even did well to even get those two goals because the Black Stars were, were very bad. Were, they have been very bad throughout this whole interesting. tournament. Interesting, the two goals came after. <laughs> The red card, so they were yes. one man down. Yes, a very, a very uh, contentious red card. I'm, I'm still not so certain about. It. I, I think for me, it wasn't, it wasn't a red card. It's a 50-50 challenge, and if anything, the, the worst should have been a yellow card for Andre Ayew. But going straight for the red, I think was a little too harsh. But, but, but then, there was head injury for for the goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper spilled the ball. It's a 50-50. You and I are going for it. And if you look at the, the video tape slowly. Andrea actually got a piece of the ball before the keeper did, when the, when the keeper spilled it. So it's a 50-50 challenge. And then uh, there's this always, there's this thing always said that uh, in the goalkeeper's box, the, the right or the, 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 the doubt is given to the, to, the, to the goalkeeper, not the player, understandable. But the straight red, I think, for me was too harsh. The worst Andrea should have gotten was a yellow card. Yes, it's a foul. Yes, he, he, he got the, the contact on the goalkeeper, hit his head and the rest. But then it's a 50-50 challenge. We are going for the ball. Football is a contact sport. I mean, I think that it was just too harsh on, on, on the side of the referee. But uh, I think that it, it all led to the, the, the spirits downing for, for the Black Stars. But, but let's talk about the first goal. The, give, the goal came just four minutes inside the game. Yeah. What's really happened? What went wrong for, for I, the I, Black Stars? The, 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 the plan of them was really a, a two-on-one affair, really. So they really cut off Babaraman. They sucked Babaraman in. It was a two-on-one, one-one, and then they moved. They, they clear out Babaraman. Then you are left with uh, Alexander Jiku and then Pate. Uh, uh, Alexander Jiku and then Amate. Amate. And even instead of Amate to go and close the ball, rather went back, probably blocking out Wallacott, so didn't see the ball. He was, he was locked on his line. When the ball is hit, you realize that Wallacott is just standing there because he can't see the ball. Instead of Amate to go for it, close down the, 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 the player, make sure he doesn't come on to the right or left foot. When he got into the box, he had two options that, that the, the, the Comoros player to either pass it or shoot himself. But, but and then you, because of the block on Amate, hmm. he, sh he decided to shoot the ball because the, the keeper couldn't see anything. If you look at the angle from behind the, the, the goalkeeper, behind the, the post, the camera behind the post, realize that Kola Kost couldn't see anything. But, but and that for me is like bad defending. The, the two defenders, then they were isolated. They couldn't very, see very isolated. So it means they should have been covered for Babara, man. Exactly. But in the lineup, we didn't see any defensive midfielder that was going to do the cover up for, for them. You think that the lineup was wrong for the day? Uh, I think that yes, I think the, the lineup, in the in the center of midfield, you had Thomas Partey and then uh, Trey. Mm. Trey and Partey are very creative players. There's no one tracking back. Mm. And yes, uh, Baba Ramanu, uh, Baba Idrisu was injured getting to the game, so that means no defensive cover at all. You get me? So that really from so from the very off, from the lineup to the gameplay. In fact, throughout this whole tournament, I think that there have been so many mistakes that have led to the the, the demise of Ghana from this this half court. Very well, interesting. So, lastly, so where do you think the Black Stars go next? Because they're still have gone next year and the future of Inubamari Vax 2 is still in limbo. You think we should keep him 
Well, I think that uh, sucking him and going for a new coach would just be a cycle all over again. You finish a tournament, the coach doesn't do well, you sack him, bring another one, he doesn't do well, you sack him. We have to, there's, there's, it's high time we have to have a permanent solution for the Black Stars. And that for me is having one coach who will continue having a same team that will, will guide them, teach them, as game and game one. We have the World Cup qualifiers in March. Mm. Sacking him now, we are in January. They will get a, a, a coach latest by the end of January or February. He has less than 28 days in February to get ready for them in March. You understand me? And most likely, we get a new coach by February and the rest. We are not qualifying for the World Cup. You understand me? So have him there. He has already said for him that his, his primary target is the World Cup and not the Africa Cup of Nations. So the Africa Cup of Nations was more of a trial test for him to see the players that he has. But if, if you say that, I find it very interesting because um, on that day when Emilio was unveiled, mm -hmm. his targets, two targets that I remember was that he should win the Afghan, which was promised, I think, 300,000 dollars or so yeah. and then they have the world cup was also 300,000 making 600,000 sure. dollars so if he says his target was the world cup qualifiers and not the afghan i find it very interesting yeah so that's that's also his words and not mine but then if you look at uh, his he has only been appointed less than three months the back and forth getting the team together flying all the way to dubai I don't think that's ample time to actually get a team together. Mm. And you can make a classic example of, of Jürgen Klopp at Liverpool. He was there five years, building up a team. That's five years. Liverpool ended up always finishing out of the top four, fifth, sixth, seventh, and gradually. Now look at how Liverpool is now. Contending for the title, Manchester City and, and Liverpool. That's what I'm just trying to put out there, that it doesn't take three months to build a team. There needs to be regular supervision. You changing a coach won't do that. But because this, this is a national team, we already have the players available. We already have this. Do, we, do we have the players available? I, 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 we have. I don't. I don't think that. Look, mo most people always say that our, our standard have dropped as a nation. Yes, agreed. But I don't think that Moses Simon of uh, Nigeria is better than Kamal Adin Suleiman. They all play in the same league, the French league. Ah, Simon, Moses Simon plays for Nantes in the league. Simon, Kamal Adin plays for Rennes. Kamal Adin has virtually dominated the league. A, a, a league that's dominated or it has Lionel Messi, Neymar, he was just the best dribbler in the, in, the, in the month of October or so, the best player in the month of October. Mm -hmm. So I don't think individually we don't have the, the quality. We have, even though the standard have dropped, but mm -hmm. it's down to coaching. If the, the coach is not able to amass the right players, the, the, the players who are fit enough, if you take Wakasi to a tournament and he, he can't even warm up, that's, that's problematic. I don't know what, what, what you think about it, but the coaching needs to, to improve. The coaching needs to improve, fine. But he's not going to do that in a three-month spell. That's what I'm trying to put out there. That It's not about having the short term, but looking at the long-term projects for, for Ghana and the Blasters totally. You mentioned Moses Simon. Moses Simon, in the last game of the Africa Cup of Nations, he, he came off the bench. I know that you watched that particular game. He was excellent. You, can, you can't say the same for Kamal Din Suleiman in the Blasters. And he played all three games. Mm. You can't say the same. Moses Simon is on a level of his, his own compared to Kamal. You're talking about Kamal, that is in the French league. Come, come, come to the national team. He, he comes off the bench. Moses Simon goes, I don't know what that particular, that particular last game, I was very impressed with him. He goes beyond one, two, three, four players. You, can, you can't say the same but, about but, Kamal. But, that, that, that's it, it's, it's about the system. In, the, in that system, he knows his roles. He knows the pattern and of you're play. You're saying Kamal Dinsley, man, doesn't after, know his role in the, in the Black Stars. If you look at the, the game they, they, they play, there's no pattern. Everybody's playing with his... his his mind, like this, there was a ball that Isaku dribbled one to Pate, Pate dash. There was no pass to Pate because all the players they are all playing with their own capabilities. There's, I'm saying that there's no structure in the team. Yes. If you look at the play. Uh, yesterday we watched Ivory Coast. You could see that this is their plan. If they are counter attacking you, there's this pattern of it that they want to to attack to. So I don't know, but. <laughs> Interesting fact uh, over there in the Blasters of Ghana. So the Blasters are out of the competition. Their worst spell since this competition uh, started, since 2006, or, or actually when the Blasters was eliminated uh, from the group stage of the competition. So uh, let's move on to uh, other groups. In Group D, Nigeria, they are the perfect team in that in this year's competition. Three out of three, they beat. Um, I think Guinea Bissau yeah. in the last game to seal their, their spot in around 16. So they finished first over there. 
we were talking about Nigeria in, 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 in that group. So they, they seem to be the team to beat now after yeah. the, the group stage. Yeah. They, are, they, are the, they are the team to beat. And uh, you were talking about structure for Ghana. They have a structure. They understand what they are going to do. You, you don't always have to have the stars on the field to actually make the, the goods happen. And you can see from the last game, Kelechi in naturally didn't finish that game. Come on comes the likes of Moses Simon and the rest. You still, you can realize that the form hadn't dropped even after the stars had gone off. Kelechi and Nacho came off. Uh, a lot of other poke also came off. Everybody that came on for Nigeria, they understood that this is the gameplay, this is the mindset. This is how we are moving forward to beat the squad. And that is what Nigeria has over most of the countries in this tournament. Mm. And I think that for me, they are the team to beat. And yeah. I, think that, uh, as, uh, I think that for the coach as well, he's trying to lock down a permanent job for Nigeria. Interesting. So he's, 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 he's on the interim. Have a, a man to replace him and then he will take over the technical exactly. directorship yeah. after. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how the new coach coming in will also continue his, mm. his spell. But on that game again, this is a game that they didn't need uh, the, the win because they are already qualified. But yeah. The agency, the agency of, of, of getting the win means that the, there's this unity in the team and then they, they are for, for a task in this year's AFCO. So that's it for, for Nigeria. Now, Egypt, they, in that group, they managed, after all the struggles, they finished second. And then with six points, with, with plus one goal. Um, I, I do think that going forward, Egypt should find a new strategy of getting goals because they still, it looks like they're still depending, still depending on yeah, Mohamed Salah. I think that yeah, they have a lot of players in, in store. I think that they have to get the burden of uh, of Mohamed Salah. Yes, he's a very good player. He's the, he's their the, he's their top man. But then, if you watch the game, he he didn't really turn up in the last game. And even the goal came from a set piece, header inside. So you have to look at other alternatives in getting goals. Because if you look at Mohamed Salah all the time, uh, he's also a human being. He's not perfect. There are always times, there are always games that he will not get. On, on, his top, on his top side. So moving forward, I think it's actually lucky on the side of Egypt that they got to qualify because they, 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 didn't, really, they didn't start well. 1-0, 1-0 victories. So not, that's nothing really to write home about for uh, an Egyptian side who have won this competition seven times. They are the, they are the side who have really dominated this, this competition. So for them and the pedigree that they've, they've come into the competition with, this is not uh, the, the Egypt that we know. So there's a lot more that needs to be done. But I think that going forward, they have more time. Their next game is next week. So they try to actually get the, 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 the goods going in the round of 16 for them, uh, for Egypt. But uh, they have to look for other alternatives. That's the, that's the main, that's the main uh, outline after that. Well, interesting enough, Egypt, they took on Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast in the round 16 stage. And Ivory Coast, yesterday, they, 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 they didn't spare Algeria no, at all. No. They, they, no. Even though after making it to the round 16, they still uh, wanted to, to knock them out. And of course, they beat them three goals to one. Mm. So Algeria are out of the competition. Algeria this. <laughs> in fact, every statistics go in their favor. They are able to dominate games. They are able to control games. And they are able to create chances. But the, what's lacking is, is the goals. I don't, mm. I don't know what... Jamal Bermadi, the head coach, had not done in the game. I don't know what's wrong with, with the team Algeria. I think that uh, for Algeria, it's just down to uh, them not having the, the players really. If you look at the players from the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations and then this time, there's been a, a significant drop in the quality of the players, if I put it that way. Then, then we had Mares as well, we're missing that penalty. If you look at the chances that they actually missed, Ivory Coast wins as, as, as top top as they, even though they got 3-1. But then, if, imagine Maris has, has scored a penalty and the number of saves that were, for me were lucky on, on the Cote d'Ivoire side. If those wins are gone, they will have got the, something out of it. But uh, the Cote d'Ivoire were, 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 just, were just too good for them. And even up to about the 90 plus two minutes, they were still going for a count, catching them on the counter attack. They weren't relenting at all, trying to make a statement that uh, the likes of Sebastian Halle. Uh, Wilfred Zaha and uh, Nicola Pepe are not trying to come and play in this tournament at all. They're actually in for the win. And they were really boosted with the, the addition of uh, Serge Ori. Mm. That particular game was superb. The captain of, on, on the day was very superb for them. And I think that uh, with that in, in mind, they were trying to go for it. They have this height advantage, mm. both in attack and defence, that has really served them well. So if they, you can't cross the ball really for them, if you want to score them, you can't really cross the ball because they have two height-worthy people in defence that will always head the ball away. In, in front, you have the likes of Sebastian Halle and you have a good somebody who really crosses the ball like Nicola Pepe on the left, on the right, and then Wilfred Zaha on the left. 
So no matter if a cross comes in, you always know that the aim is for Sebastian Haller with the head. So so then you are always trying to you always be at a, a difficulty really. Mm. Sebastian Haller is good with his head and his foot as well. Defense as well, they have the height in there, so there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of advantages for the for the Ivory Coast, and I think that in this tournament right now is the Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and then Cameroon, who we really, really have to look look up to. But then we've gone, we've seen in the tournament that uh, the, the 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 big guns always tend to, to fall out on the the weirdest circumstances. So uh, not to give the others away, but I think that for me, the three top teams in this Afcon so far: Ivory Coast, Cameroon, and uh, Nigeria. Nigeria, of course, and Ivory Coast. Beating the holders out of this tournament will really be a good bo a boost for the, for the team. Uh, coming up against another North African side, which is Egypt, over there. But for Algeria, it's a repeat of history for them because in 1994, when they were de defending the trophy that they won in 1990, they needed a win against Ibrox in the last group game, but they managed or they lost in that game. They were knocked out in the group stage again. This time, they fall, they will also be knocked out from the group stage by a certain Cote d'Ivoire. And in that tournament, Ivory Coast went on to win the, the, the competition or the trophy yeah. in 1994. So interesting stuff over there for Ivory Coast and then Algeria. In the last group, Group F Mali, they finished first with seven points. The Gambia finished second and then Tunisia also finished third with three points. So if um, Tunisia finished third in, uh, in that group as one of the best third place teams. I, I find it interesting and difficult to understand because coming into this competition, they tipped as one of the favorites to win the competition and then coming third to Gambia and then Mali. I don't know what's, what's also going wrong in the camp of Tunisia. I think that a, a lot of things have gone wrong generally in this tournament uh, in terms of uh, the teams and their gameplay and their players involved. So it's not really weird to see the likes of Tunisia who are a force to reckon with when it comes to African football being uh, low in the third. But for them and for most of the countries in this tournament, it's getting out of the group stage. That's the most important thing. So they don't really care how it's done. Even if they are the third best team, it's about looking to the next the next game and trying to actually beat them. They don't have it easy because they are facing Nigeria in the round of 16. They, they don't have it easy at all. Uh, because the, the Nigerians have also shown that no, they are not coming to play at all. So they have it all to do, but it's not really weird to think about it because uh, a lot of things can happen in any competition at all. So it's not really out for them. They have to just uh, put in their pieces and actually get move forward and actually be, try to beat Nigeria, if I can say it that way. Mm. Interesting. There. So let's uh, talk about the round 16 is starting off on Sunday. Um, Burkina, they take on Gabon. Your quick, your quick prediction on that. Uh, I think that. Uh, <laughs> It's a very difficult one to call, but I think that uh, Burkina, no, the Gabon, the Gabonese will just uh, edge them out. Uh, uh, yeah. I think Gabon can, yeah, can edge they out. can slightly edge them out. One nil, two nil, just edge them out. All right. So there's Nigeria against Tunisia. Nigeria, straight. Nigeria, Nigeria going to straight. Senegal, Cape Verde. <laughs> I don't know what. I think Cape Verde can can pull off something in yeah. that in that game. Cape Verde are more skillful than the Senegalese. Mm. So likes of Rodriguez. Even look at the goal he scored against Cameroon. It's not something uh, orthodox, something that you see more of it from a Cape Verde side. But then I think that they, they are more skillful than Senegal. I won't be surprised if Cape Verde go, go the way to beat Senegal because the Senegalese haven't been up to pass so far. Mm. If the next round they're able to get the people that they need off the entry list and move them forward onto the field, maybe we can think about them winning. But then uh, as I said now, as I said, I think that uh, the Cape Verde will uh, slightly edge out the, the, the Senegalese. All right, and then there's Mali against Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea have been impressive this this afternoon, but Mali too, they are one of the teams to beat in this tournament. Your, your take on that game? I think yes. that Equatorial Guinea made a statement after stopping the Algerian run. Mm. That, that's 35 games on beating, and then you go on. And that's a statement really they've made that they are they are in they are in for the kill. So it's also going to be a, a very edgy game, but. I think that yeah, I think that the the price of which Mali have, if you look at the Guineas, Guineans, Equatorial uh, Guineans so far, they haven't scored mostly more than a goal really in the tournament. But Mali have uh, accumulated accumulated goals, even scoring two in their very last game. So when it comes to goal scoring threat, which is which is what wins the game really, uh, I think that yeah, the Mali the Malians can just edge them outside. Interesting. And then uh, Guinea, uh, Gambia. These are very equal size of I think mm. so, but mm. 
I don't know, Guinea, Guinea with Nabi Keita has been very, very impressive in the group stage. So I, I'm hoping that Captain, Captain Nabi Keita you know, they will still yeah. through in that, uh, that uh, tie over there. Cameroon, the host nation, they took on Comoros in that game. Comoros, <laughs> uh, uh, so I don't know. Cameroon, uh, you think that the, the, the host, that element is going to, to, to take them through? Definitely. I think that it would. And then, uh, over the, the last round of group stage game, the president for Bia uh, issued a, a decree really that uh, all games, all workplaces and all schools close half day so that they can get a chance to watch the Africa Cup of Nations. So you are expecting the stadium to be full. And then the dignitaries of Cameroon will be there. I know that uh, Samuel Tofios has been to all the Cameroonian games so far. So you expect his presence there and they will want to disappoint the, the IFA president when he's in the stadium. So I think that they're going for the queue. And I'm actually very happy that in this case that Ghana no, have not qualified because with the team that we have currently, Cameroon would have destroyed us. Even for Comoros, it's not going to be easy for, for them. Wow. But so even imagine for, if it was Ghana. So uh, I think that the Cameroon will, get, will have it straight. Uh, um, Vincent Tabu Baka and his charges will, 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 make, will make that happen, I'm sure of it. All right, uh, then there's Morocco, Malawi. Morocco, um, I, I think they're their favorites to, to take this one up. And then. Uh, Malawi mm. are no pushover, if, if I must add. Okay. Yeah, winning, they, they won that uh, the the last, last two, uh, two one. So they are, no, they are no real pushover, but I think that the, the Moroccans will just come and come in, 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 in fighting. Yeah. All right, and then uh, the crunch, crunch time, that's our assisting game is between Ivory Coast and Egypt. That's going to be a big game, of course. It's going to be a big game, but I don't really see it as that. You know, I think that the Ivory Coast will just do what they do. I think that they are too formidable for the Egyptian side as at now. If you look at that, that particular game, the last game, even on the last chance, Sebastian Haller getting a goal, rightly disallowed. But then the, the, the attacking and defensive strength of Ivory Coast will just edge out, uh, will just edge out the likes of Mohamed Salah. But it's going to be a very interesting game. But I think that Ivory Coast will just, will just win, the, win this one totally. All right, so Ivory Coast to edge up in that consistent tie against Egypt over there. So it's going to be interesting games in around 16, of course. The rest of us will be giving you more updates as the tournament goes on. So that's it from us here on the um, Universe Afcon 2021 review show here on Universe TV. My name is Princeton Radio, head coach here with Sununu. We'd love to hear from you on our Universe TV channel on YouTube. So leave your comments down there and hit the subscribe and like button. That's it from us here. Until we meet again, take care and bye bye.